بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Peace be upon him whose burial wash was his blood, whose shroud was the weaving wind, whose camphor fragranting his corpse was the diffused desert sand, whose coffin was the spear lifting his severed head, and whose grave lies in the hearts of the millions of his lovers. O oh, sun, don't set, they behold Hussein's head. O oh, sun, don't set, they behold Hussein's head. Ya shams la tribi, ras Hussein ma'al gom. On the tenth day of Ashura, O oh, sun, don't set, they behold Hussein's head. The last hour, the last minutes, the last moments of commemorating the event, we shout out, O oh, sun, don't set. They behold Hussein's head. It was the year 680 or 61 Hijri on the Muslim calendar. Imam Hussein, the grandson of Prophet Muhammad stood there with 72 of his companions. O oh, sun, don't set. They behold Hussein's head. All were slain. And the worst tragedy and probably human history unfolded that day. And now, nearly 1400 years later, we commemorate that day. During the traditional processions here in Katif, Saudi Arabia, we shout out in two groups chanting to each other. One group shouting out, oh sun, don't set. And the other group shouts back, they have, they behold Hussein's head. O oh, sun, don't set, because the atrocities of the day are too much to bear. O oh, sun, don't set, because the worst is actually yet to come. The Umayyad army will decapitate the slain bodies. They will raise the heads on spears. They will burn the tents of the family of the household of Prophet Muhammad. They will whip the children, and worse, they will captivate them and take them as bounty from town to town, from Karbala to Kufa to Damascus. They will be shown in public in humiliation at the court of the governor of Kufa, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, and at the court of the Umayyad tyrant Yazid in Damascus. O oh, sun, don't set the final calls our weeping, our cries, our faint hope that we can do something, the last chance that we can make a stand. Oh, sun, don't set. Al Ashura was about making choices, about making the right choices, about starting new beginnings, about living a life of moral values. Before the battle of Karbala, there were many choices to be made. Imam Hussein had lived for 10 years under the rule of the Umayyad Caliph, Muawiyah. And when he passed away, Imam Hussein had not pledged allegiance to Muawiyah and did not intend to pledge allegiance to his son, Yazid. But Yazid demanded that Imam Hussein gives in his hand. But Imam Hussein gave instead his head and not his hand he would not pledge allegiance to that tyrant. Imam Hussein, before the Karbala battle, talked in a speech to the 30,000 troops of the Umayyad army. He asked them they could return back, they could leave him alone, they could join him in the uprising against Yazid, they can free their spirits, they can free their minds, but they chose to stand with Yazid. Either you pledge allegiance or you die. Imam Hussein spoke with the leader of the Umayyad army, Umar ibn Sa'd. And Umar ibn Sa'd was torn between his conscience and between the promise of the governorship of the town of Ray. Ibn Sa'd finally chose the authority of might over the might of values. During battle, 
the Umayyad army had cut off water supplies and the route to the Euphrates River from the Hussein's camp. They were unable to reach water to the household of family of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Imam Hussein presented an infant crying of thirst. The Umayyad army had the choice to give the infant some water or not to give them water. They did not send water, but they sent an arrow that struck his neck and killed him instantly. After the battle, as the caravan moved to Damascus, Imam Hussein's daughter of four years old, Ruqayya, in the shack that they stayed in, had dreamt of seeing her father. She woke up crying. She wanted to see her father. The woman wailed, the children cried, and the noise reached Yazid. He could have shown some decency, some mercy. He did not send a present, but he sent a plate covered. When she lifted the plate, she saw the severed head of her father, and she passed away immediately. The Umayyads took the wrong choices throughout the Battle of Karbala before, during, and after. We are responsible to make the right choices for ourselves. The Quran tells us, He who created death and life, that he might try you as to which of you is better indeed. There were so many deeds that were right and were conscious on that day. First example I'd like to share is Al-Hur bin Yazid al-Riyahi. Al-Hur was the leader of a regiment of 1,000 soldiers in the camp of the Umayyad army. But on the day of Ashura, he lived by his name, Al-Hur, the free. And he switched and joined the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and met the same fate. But probably the best example is that of Zainab, the sister of Imam Hussein. The great example for making their choices and starting new beginnings. When all the 72 companions of Imam Hussein were slain, there was only one man left, a 23-year-old Ali, the son of Imam Hussein, who was too ill to fight. She helped protect him during, in the court of Ibn Ziyad and Yazid despite their intentions to kill him. By her new beginnings, by the choices she made, she gave speeches in those courts that switched the public opinion and made Yazid live in disgrace to the present day. She could have submitted to the reality that so many were killed. She could have submitted to the reality that she was a female in a caravan of 25 to 35 women and children with no man to hold a sword. She could have submitted to that reality, but instead she made a new reality. To Yazid she said, so scheme as you wish to scheme and plot as you could ever plot and exert efforts as much as you dare for by Allah, you shall never be able to kill our inspiration or erase from memory our passion. She was right, not only because she predicted it, but because she created it. And for over a millennium, the love of Hussein continues, and the shouts continue day by day and year to year, لَبَّيْكَ ya Hussein. Here we are in your service, O Hussein. لَبَّيْكَ ya Hussein, as we make the choices day by day, the choice to stand with the truth or submit to falsehood, to help the needy or to live in selfishness, to be whistleblowers and expose wrongdoing or wish the wrong just goes away by just not looking at it. Labbayka ya Hussein, every day, as we look at our actions, how did we treat other people? How did we face adversity? Did we apologize for others from our mistakes? Did we repent to God from our sins? We learn every day, Labbayka ya Hussein, 
as we live a life of moral values. A life that we learn from Imam Hussein alayhi salam himself during one of his pilgrims at Hajj. On the day of Arafah, he supplicates to Allah, O oh, oh, he who pardons the greatest sins by his clemency, O oh, he who lavishes blessings by his bounty, O oh, he who gives abundance by his generosity, O oh, sustenance to me in my adversity, O oh, companion to me in my solitude, O oh, aid to me in my affliction, O oh, benefactor to me in my blessings, O oh, my God, and God of my fathers, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord of Gabriel, Michael, and Israfil, Lord of Muhammad, the seal of the prophets, and his household, the chosen ones, revealer of the Torah, the gospel, the Psalms, and the criterion, and sender down of Kaf Ha Ya Ain Saad, Taha Ya Sin, and the wise Quran. Thou art my cave of refuge when the roads for all their amplitude constrict me and the land for all its breadth is straight for me. If not for thy mercy, I would have been among the perishing and thou annulst my slip. If not for thy covering me, I would have been among the disgraced and thou confirmst me with help against my enemies. And if not for thy helping me, I would have been among those overcome. But Imam Hussein, as he lived this life of morality and chose his decisions, he did not perish nor was overcome. Because until this day, we shout out, Labbayka ya Hussein. Muslims of all stripes, of, of all sects, Shias, Sunnis, people from around the world, from different geographies and origins and ways of life, shout out, Labbayka ya Hussein or could live by the example of Hussein. We choose to be grateful because the Quran tells us we surely showed him the way that he may either be grateful or deny. We have been shown the way and it is up to us to choose to live by values, to be grateful, to do right. And when we do wrong, we can apologize, we can repent, but like taking out nails struck to a wood, it will still leave a mark. Zainab was able to reverse the course of history. Yazid the tyrant released her and the household from captivity. She was able to come back with the severed heads back to Karbala. But it took 40 long days to correct the wrong. 40 days from Ashura until the day of Arba'een. I am sure as Zainab reached Karbala, Imam Hussein was proud of her. Proud because of her stance in front of the tyrant Yazid and changing the public opinion. Proud because she was able to preserve the livelihood of Ali, his son, and future Imam. Proud because she was able to come back with all the family. But I'm afraid she apologized because among the beheaded there was a head to return for an infant. And she probably apologized because although everyone came back, there was still Ruqayya, who she left behind in a grave in Damascus. We all here, as Zainab stood, stand again to commemorate. After 40 days, actually not just 40 days, but 40 years, 1400 years, here we stand shouting out, Labbayka ya Hussein, and holding what she forecasted to be true as she told her son Ali, looking at the battleground, all the slain. Here will be people who instill in this desert a flag for the grave of your father, the, the Lord of Martyrs, a monument that will never fade over the passing of days and nights. And here we stand year after year on the day of Ashura shouting, O sun, don't set, they behold Hussein's head so that we can correct the wrong and live by our values. So as you see the sun setting every day, look at what you have done throughout your day and see if you have chosen to live by values. And think back, 
Labbayka ya Hussein in any situation you face. Labbayka ya Hussein, as the saying goes, I shall weep in tears of blood, O oh Hussein. Assalamu ala al Hussein, wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein, wa ala awlad al Hussein, wa ala ashab al Hussein. Assalamu alaikum and sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.